Most players have never been taught the right way to hit your iron solid, to compress them, to get that divot in front of the golf ball, and to really increase your ball speeds to make it feel really solid. Now there's actually something that's really important to making this happen that I would say 99 out of 100 golfers don't get right. And they simply have the club with way too much loft for way too long, and they have the club face way too open way too long. And not back here in the swing, I'm not talking about bowing your wrist like Dustin Johnson, I'm not talking about a lot of those things you've heard before. I'm talking about through contact. And what I've done is I've stuck a magnet here on the end of the, the club face, showing me the direction that the club face is pointing. And what I want you to feel here is a low left drill. So my goal when I'm coming through contact, if I'm gonna hit this ball really solid, is to take as much loft off of this face as quickly as possible. So what I want to do is actually want to get lower to the ground. Most players tend to stand up and then they flip and they add loft. I want to actually get my, hand, my, my butt, if there's a wall behind me, I want to feel like my butt is slamming through this wall, my legs are bending, and I'm getting very low to the ground. Now that gets me closer to the golf ball so that now I could have my hands in front and I could actually touch this golf ball with this arrow that's coming out of this, this stick that's coming out of the club face. That's telling me that there's actually no loft on this club face now. I have enough shaft lean to have taken all the loft off there. And what I wanna feel like is I could drive that golf ball down the fairway. So I won't actually be able to do this, but I can drive that ball down the fairway as long as possible on the ground. All the way here to contact, my club face would still be touching that golf ball. Now, if you do that, that's gonna allow you to take a lot of loft off. And when you take that loft off, it's like the difference between hitting with a lob wedge where it just slides right under, the top, uh, right under the golf ball or hitting with a driver where it really compresses the golf ball or a sledgehammer where it's really compressing into the golf ball. There's not much loft there. When you do that, it gets you higher ball speeds. So even if you swung your, dry, or your, your lob wedge 150 miles an hour like the fastest players in the world, it's not gonna go very far, way too much loft on it. But if you swing your driver with very little loft that fast, it's going a whole heck of a long way. So that's what I wanna feel like. I get my butt back, I get my legs bent, and I wanna keep that face on that golf ball for as long as possible. Now you'll notice when I do that, I have to open my hips. If I stand up and lock my hips, I don't open them very much, then I'm gonna not be able to reach the golf ball without adding a lot of loft. If I sit back and let my legs open, I'm driving that all the way through there. The next piece you're gonna notice is my weight shift. I need to start to shift my weight to the left as I'm still swinging back, and that's gonna allow me to get down here and hit down and through and actually make that divot in front like I was talking about. So it's partially bending your legs and getting close enough to the ground where you can get that shaft lean. It's partially opening the hips so that I can get those hands leading in front and I can really compress that golf ball. And then finally here, what I really wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm not holding onto this angle. Even though I'm keeping that club face square for a long time, I wanna go ahead and let the club face turn on over. So if I grab that magnet one more time here, I wanna make sure that my magnet, as I lean my hands forward, never gets pointing to the right like that. I wanna make sure as I come through, it's turning over to the left, if anything. So it's driving through there and it's turning to the left as I make that happen. That way I can really compress it and get that nice draw on there. So if you get that sensation, squatting, turning, getting my hands in front, that's gonna allow that divot to come in front. It's gonna allow that ball to turn over from right to left and you're gonna get a whole heck of a lot of compression, solid shot. And the best part of all, you get rid of those chunks and thins. So it's gonna be really, really consistent. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. I can't hit a golf ball better than that. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's about as good as I can hit one. All right, so the big piece of this is something that I call the knuckle dragger. And that's actually the first thing that I mentioned there, where I need to get my body lower to the ground. I need to feel like my knuckles are dragging the ground to make this happen. If I'm standing up and I'm getting closer to the golf ball, if I'm getting taller, my hands are high, none of this works. You can't get in these pro-like positions where you're getting tons of shaft lean, really compressing it, if you're standing up tall. 
I have a great bonus video that I call knuckle dragger. This is the real missing key to making all this happen. You have to get this piece right or nothing else works with it. I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in a second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up on the screen. Or if you don't see one of those cards, don't worry, down below in the, the description, there'll be a link there. You can click that link and you're gonna get access to this knuckle dragger video. And I think it's gonna be really eye-opening for you. Not only for creating lag, but also getting that body in a position to where you can hit some really, really compressed irons. So best of luck, I can't wait to share with you this knuckle dragger drill, it's a ton of fun. It's one of my favorite drills. And, and like I said, it's a real eye opener for most players that I share it with. And I wanna share it with you right now. Let's go and get started. I got an awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball. So I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden I cast, I flip, and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I wanna have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally gonna lag back behind and then you're gonna release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now, another piece to this, again, when I talked about having losing that posture, your hips go forward. You're gonna to wanna to feel like as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground. 